Yeah, hello everyone. <coughs> Welcome back from the coffee break. At least those are here. <laughs> I think the weather is too nice to to sit inside. Um, yeah, I will present the Silver Laser 2020 benchmark data set. Um, this data set was um, acquired with, in, in cooperation with a company. It's called Umweltdata. So Günter Bronner is the corresponding person there. He helped us to make this benchmark happen. <clears throat> so the goal of this benchmark um, was, is, um, on practical issues in operational forest applications. Because often um, foresters, they ask which equipment they should use for acquiring data, um, how much does it cost, um, how difficult it is to operate the system in the field. And this was the background for this, for this benchmark. So we defined some, uh, some questions. So what is the time and the effort of the data acquisition? the costs and the weight of the equipment, so which processing requirements and time is needed afterwards. So how much interaction we need to, to in, in the entire workflow, how complete and robust are the derived features, which accuracy we can expect from, from the data, and of course how robust is the entire <coughs> process from the data acquisition to the feature extraction. For <coughs> acquiring the data, we have installed different um, plots in the vicinity of Vienna, in the so-called Vienna Wood. Some of you visited this site during the Sylvie laser, I guess. So we have eight sample plots in different, with different tree species, um, forest ages, and different structure and uh, within these forest plots we did measurements with different devices from BLS, MLS, DLS and also some photogrammetric devices. In addition to these um, eight plots we have in also made or uh, installed a <coughs> study area for ULS, so for drone laser scanning. It's roughly eight hect hectare in, in total size. And here we had different devices that um, did the data acquisition. Additionally, we have a very um, nice ALS data set with very high point densities. And we also did in situ measurements, classical with a caliper, so measuring the DPH. And we only measured five tree heights per plot manually. The rest is taken from from remote sensing then. Um, so we have also this classical field reference data then for validating the, the outcomes. Here's some figure about the UAVs that were <coughs> tested. And uh, you can also see on the right side the um, location of the sample plots. So for these eight sample plots, we had a radius of, so this is a circular sample plot with a radius of uh, approximately 25 meters. And I said already that the um, UAV test site had an <coughs> area of roughly eight hectares. Yeah, some impressions um, from the different test sites. So from beach, fur, uh, spruce <coughs> uh, with different um, vertical structure, <coughs> as you can see here in these images. So we tried to catch the main characteristics in this in this forest there. For the UAV side, it's a more simplified <laughs> forest. Let me <coughs> say it in this way. So we don't have much structure here. It's a more homogeneous forest site here. But the, the, the requirement for safety <coughs> were very high during this conference, and therefore we had to select the area with good uh, side of view and where people can, can watch and uh, are don't um, getting in, in danger. So therefore we selected this site. <coughs> 
Yeah, concerning the outcome, uh, we are not ready with all the comparisons. So we got uh, one data set um, just recently, last week. Um, what we did until now is to um, to catch up the data, we have a look if there are some errors in, we did the co-registration because some data sets were delivered in local coordinate systems or in the global coordinate system. So it was a lot of work to combine these data sets to cut all the data to, to a common area. Uh, what we see here um, is the time which uh, was recorded in the, during the field campaigns for the different plots. <clears throat> and on the left side, you see the, the different equipments. Yeah, you see that uh, the, the time vary a lot. Um, but um, it's difficult to interpret this, just the numbers with, without knowing all the additional information like point density, for example, or um, how, how far the processing um, was already in the field. So at the end, we have to, to make this comparison much more comprehensive and to include all the, all the information. But these are just uh, the first <clears throat> the first numbers I will show here. Yeah, concerning uh, point densities, um, we have not made any any um, guidelines, or, or we have not said you have to make at least this point density. So the different groups they could select their own own settings. And this is also the reason why the different uh, the point densities have uh, vary much between the different um, systems. But you can see here that we have the highest uh, point density here with the real VSET 400i. But this was more or less the reference. So we did a lot of, of scan positions because we want to have one very good um, point data set. Yeah, what else? Um, then we had also several devices uh, on, from iPad and the GoPro from Daniel, for example. So here the point density is uh, very, very high. <laughs> so <clears throat> some years ago, people said, um, with LiDAR you have so much data and it's not possible to process. And now the image people <laughs> comes and produce much, much more points. So it's very funny for me. Also the image matching from, from aerial images was always the big argument. Uh, you LiDAR guys, you have too much points. It's not possible. <laughs> and now they produce much, much more information if we include also the RGB information, for example. So that's uh, funny to see the developments yeah, so in here you can see the <coughs> UAV devices. And what you see here is um, the point density for individual strips. Um, so the total point density, they are much, much higher because the overlap between the strips, they are often, so one area is, is covered by at least three, four, five strips for this setting. <clears throat> yeah, what else, some, some uh, figures or some images. On the left you can see the ALS uh, reference data set, then an e uh, MLS with the ge uh, GeoSlam set horizon, then the Regal VSET 400i and the iPad. <clears throat> um, I think this shows clearly the, the benefits of each individual device. And I think this is now a, a big challenge here also in the cost action that we find um, good solutions how we can use all the advantages of the different devices and combine them to, oper or to workflows which can be used in operational applications. So I think this is our, our big challenge also here. 
Um, <clears throat> here's a comparison between UAV data and the ALS data. And you also clearly see here, it depends also on, on the acquisition settings. For example, this, uh, this data set from the company Skyability that they have used the VOOX1 and I, I have the feeling with VOOX1 you can mu achieve much, much higher point densities. Yeah? So it's just a, a type or a matter of, of settings and I think this is very important also for operational applications that people have to know which settings they have to use if they want to have this and this property of the final data set. <coughs> so that's a very important topic and I, I guess that this is also an important topic for this cost action that we could make some, some guidelines, some good practice examples or some information for operational foresters as, as a basis for the decision making. Yeah, um, what we want to do in the next weeks, months is uh, we are currently preparing a feature extraction benchmark based on this data set. So as I already said, we have geocoded the data, we have clipped the data and stored all the data in a common LAS format. The data will be published, uh, open accessible, via our research data, Theovin CRT uh, site. So after this publication, you have free access to the data. I think it's also a way for future, how we can deal with, with the data that we make it open accessible. And um, yeah, then the question, also is what, what we do in the future with this data set. Um, I plan that we take this data set as a basis for some, some international, European, global kind of point cloud database. I know that there are several initiatives already ongoing, but maybe we can find a way here in the cost action how, how we can build up a bigger system, a sustainable system um, of, of such a database. I think it would be very valuable if we have such a database, especially as training um, data source, because the data acquisition and the data pre-processing, uh, if, if I think to a PhD student, this, this step always takes half of the time of the entire PhD. And often for the real application or for method development, there's not enough time. And that's often a, a pity. Of course, the people learn a lot during this data acquisition and pre-processing, but it's, it's going very slowly forward in, in a global or in a, a bigger context. Yeah, and um, I think we can discuss then in the next uh, meetings within this three days, um, how we can go further with this data set. Okay, then thank you for attention and if you have questions, I am here.